16 conference titles, three-time black college national champions, 23 All-Americans, countless All-SWAC players. In the long and storied history of Jackson State University Athletics, 86 former Tigers had the distinguished honor of being selected in the National Football League Draft. Some of them rank among the greatest to ever play the game. In 2013, a new group of former JSU athletes are on a mission to join this elite fraternity. Go. This is their story. The road to gridiron greatness begins here at the JSU weight room. It's a once in a lifetime thing. They realize everybody's not going to make the big leagues, but yet and still they got an opportunity. Inside, scouts from several NFL teams begin to scrutinize every inch of the players' physiques. It's huge for us. It's not just a, a walk through the park holding hands with somebody you like. You know, it's serious. The Pro Day coordinator, linebackers coach Antonio Knight, is no stranger to hype. When I put it together, you know, I'm talking all year to the different scouts and the different teams, you know, I'm pubbing all my guys. I'm, I'm, I'm pubbing all of them from the least to the, to the you know, big time names, you know, I'm, I'm pubbing everybody. One of those big time names garnering extra attention from the scouts is the reigning SWAC Offensive Player of the Year, Rico Richardson. Hailing from Natchez, Mississippi, Richardson first caught the eye of JSU defensive coordinator Darren Hayes, who recruited him heavily after seeing his explosiveness and versatility on the field. I knew that this guy right here to me was a pro at, at, in high school because he just was fast, he can get open, he can run routes, he had that ability, he had a little swag, he just was skinny. Despite posting over 1,000 yards of total offense as a high school senior, none of the other major football programs in the state offered Rico a scholarship. It could have been a Mississippi State, could have been an Ole Miss, could have been a Southern Miss, easy. I don't know why they overlooked, I'm, I'm glad they did. Sometimes you get so enamored with how many stars somebody have that you forget to evaluate talent. Their loss proved to be a huge gain for the Tigers coaching staff. Richardson would eventually become the team's primary deep threat, culminating in a breakout senior year in 2012 when he nearly shattered the school's single season record for receiving yards with 1,081 while scoring 10 touchdowns. He's proven that he can catch the football, He's proven that he can catch the football in traffic, and he's proven that he can be a deep threat also. Uh, this is Coach Buck. Wide receivers coach Christopher Buckner saw firsthand the determination Richardson possessed to become an elite receiver. Rico Richardson uh, coming into spring of 2012, he was all in. He took everything he had to do, he put it to use as far as with the, getting out there with the quarterbacks because he knew he wasn't going to break a record or, or get the yards he wanted without their help. I think Rico Richardson's speed uh, today will uh, make him a standout along with his strength. We're looking, he's gotten stronger since he's been working out. As the pro day drills begin, Rico's performance immediately begins to turn heads. One forward, Rico. Ten feet, one inch. He went off and trained and came back ready, gained 10 pounds, got stronger. Since I've been trying, I've improved a lot on my bench press and just getting stronger. While his showing in the weight room is impressive, his biggest test is yet to come on the field in the 40-yard dash. The immense difficulty of the challenge these young men face to make it to the pros can't be overstated. The biggest interview of their life. Football is something they've been doing since they was five, six years old. And now you come to a point in your career where you don't know if you're going to do it again. You're leaving college. It's not guaranteed like it was in high school and college. You're trying to get to the next level. Since 2000, only one ex-Jackson State football player has heard his name called on draft day wide receiver Jamar Johnson, 
chosen by the Minnesota Vikings in the sixth round of the 2008 draft. Former JSU standout Rico Richardson hopes he'll be the next. A lot of people said I was too small to play football. I, mean, I proved them wrong many times, but it really doesn't matter what size you are. I mean, you could be 225 pounds, you could be 160 pounds. 5'11 and a half, 5'11 and a half. Rico is the next level football player. There's a lot of receivers in the National Football League his size right now. Some may be even smaller, but uh, you never can determine a person's heart and, and his determination to go out there and, and play at the next level. While the undersized Richardson isn't the prototypical NFL wide receiver, he does possess one key attribute every team craves, speed. something offensive coordinator Derek McCall gleefully took advantage of on game day. One of our favorite plays that we uh, were installed for RICO purposes was uh, our six call. And uh, basically, everybody, everybody's running streaks. You utilize RICO speed, guys getting up the field. They put pressure on these guys right here, on that corner. Put pressure on this guy right here. And we had a lot of success a lot of success getting that deep ball over to Rico. With his speed and his quickness, it was hard for that corner to come down and try to play him. Nearly every deep ball we caught this year and the last couple of years of Rico has been basically off of this play, what we call six call. And the uh, only thing that means, go get six. And six meaning a touchdown. There's no one that can cover Rico. No one. No, no one in the country can cover him. I mean, consistently. Because he's just going to make you look bad and blow right past you. Pro Day is the first opportunity scouts have to put Richardson's breakaway speed to the test. I think we're on an amazing four day today. Uh, they're projecting me to run slower than what I think, so today I'm just going to go out there and give him a show. Okay, what's the projection on your 40? I'm not going to say, but we'll see when we get out there. Brother Rico Richardson. The first uh, step to running a good 40 is your first 10 yards. Do you explode when you come out of it? Are you low? And are you rising as you come through it? Rico has a good stride. He has long legs. Most of his body is legs. You know, he has a small torso, he's long legs. So he takes great steps and he has a great stride. Unofficially, he ran a 4-2-7. In this game of football, speed is, is very important. And that's what Rico presents, speed. That's what I think the scouts are very excited about. With a crowd of well-wishers looking on, Richardson puts on a clinic, exceptional hands. Quick feet. There you go. All right, accelerate. And outstanding agility. Maurice Aikens, uh, Carl Powell, uh, John Ray Brown, those are some excellent receivers that came through and that played in the National Football League. I project Rico um, being right there along with those guys and having the same opportunity uh, to get to the next level. Came out here and gave them my all. They're working very hard on all of my drills and everything. I think I came out here and gave it a great shot. I think the uh, scouts were impressed with what they seen today. He would tell you anytime you talk to him, because he felt he's the fastest person any, in, anywhere. He's faster than all my defensive backs, faster than all the receivers. If you let him tell it now. Joshua LaBoy, who was the Louisiana. Just a powerhouse type of player, just really strong. He's like fast as a DB, like almost a freak of nature. Every time he got an opportunity to do anything, he did it at 100% or 110% because that was his drive. Growing up in the Big Easy, Former two-time All-American Joseph LeBeau's extraordinary talents on the gridiron were undeniable. But his lackluster academic performance nearly derailed his dream of playing big-time college football. I remember me uh, graduating from high school. I had a 1.8 GPA. I couldn't, go, I couldn't get into no school. This is a guy who, coming out of high school, had a 15 on the ACT. And those, those scores are supposed to predict whether someone um, succeeds in life. Uh, they don't predict anything. The, the man's desire uh, took over, and he was determined to prove that that was not going to be his benchmark. LeBeau would have to travel 437 miles north to Little Rock, Arkansas, where one school, Arkansas Baptist College, was willing to give him a chance. 
I wasn't gonna let grades um, conflict with me playing football, uh, earning me a scholarship. So when I went to college, my first year, junior college in Arkansas Baptist, I uh, told myself that I was gonna get three point or higher. After arriving on the Jackson State campus in 2011, LeBeau immediately displayed an incredible determination to succeed not only on the field, but in the classroom. He excelled in the college level, not just on the football field, but in the classroom. And he graduated uh, at the absolute top of his class, magnum cum laude. And that's something that uh, I'm excited about and just seeing him praises all day long. In just two seasons at JSU, LeBeau earned all SWAC honors twice, finishing his career with 147 total tackles, including 48 tackles for loss to go with 26 and a half sacks. But despite being a big time playmaker at defensive end in college, his chances of playing the same position in the NFL appear to be slim. According to CBSSports.com, the top 50 defensive end prospects in the 2013 draft weigh at least 245 pounds. None are less than six feet, one inches tall. This is Joe LeBeau on deck. Five, one, one, six. Five, one, one, six. I'm a great player, but defense in, you got to be kind of tall or whatnot. But uh, in my mind, if you could play, you, you could play. And despite training hard to add more bulk to his already chiseled frame, he becomes visibly frustrated after stepping on the scale. 217, 217. That doesn't sound right? Right again? Well, he could definitely stand, maybe gain maybe another 10, 15 pounds for sure. 230, 240 is what they would like him to be and still have that, still be as fast. But he's he's solid now, he's all muscle. So that may be 217 pounds of all muscle. A guy like uh, LeBeau, who may not have the size, but he has speed and quickness and strength, that they may be able to move him to another position and, um, and play him somewhere else. We played him at defensive end, but he may be looked at an outside linebacker because he can run. I'm a student of the game, so I can learn, I can develop skills, whatever they need me to do, I can do. So it's just a different position, but I, I feel like I adjust to it though. However, raw talent is one thing the scale can't measure, and LeBeau's explosive athleticism gives the scouts something to think about. 10 3. Come on. He what every coach dream to have on his team. You know, one of the guys that come early, stay late. He gonna always ask the question, how can I get better? What can I do to improve? He was the type of guy that was gonna pick up his teammates. He kids see a guy struggling, he's gonna go pick him up and push him and motivate him to get through. He will be truly missed to Jackson State. Now finish. Puts me in the mind of uh, Pittsburgh Steelers great James Harrison in terms of his size, not real, real tall, uh, but as fast and as strong as a James Harrison, and as a, tr a tremendous playmaker in that same mold. We, put up, we all put up some great numbers. Uh, the scouts got uh, got some work out of us, but I feel like we had a great day. Go, 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 come on, come on, go, go. go. Work, 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 work. Eat, baby, best work, in the world. How about them damn tights? Best in the world, baby. Best in the world. He's that type of guy that there's no walkthrough, there's always run through. There's never no half speed, there's always full speed because that's the only way he know how to do it. It's either all or none. Often the black hole in the Tigers' vaunted dark side defense Former D-tackle Jonathan Billups' hyper-aggressive mentality proved difficult for opposing offenses to handle, not to mention his own teammates. Jonathan Billups, he always, in one-on-ones in practice, he would always try to go against me and nah. When we would be in practice, LeBeau and Billups would get into us sometimes because Billups took practice as game day. LeBeau liked to learn in practice. LeBeau liked to get every little detail. Billups like to just take off. So sometimes it'd be like, well, Billups, slow down. Let, let, let's get the full thing first. And Billups would be like, man, let's just go get it. So when game time came, Billups was like that in game. I mean, we'll run all over the field. I mean, he about the only 300-some pound guy you would actually see go down there after wide receiver. Compared to his all-or-nothing style on game day, Billups' NFL ambitions prior to his senior year in 2012 were less evident. That changed when a pro scout couldn't take his eyes off Billups while studying film of a fellow JSU prospect. 
He never had any admirations about NFL. That never came out of his mouth. It was just this past year that scouts came in the year before looking at Donovan. And looking at Donovan, Ashley saw Billups was like, who is this guy? He, every time I see him, he's running up and down the field. Even though the scout loved his relentless motor, he was less than enamored with his waistline. Had a meet with him, scout from St. Louis, brought him in and told him, um, we like what you're doing. If you can do one thing for me, I would love to see you lose the weight. You lose the weight, I think we could probably find somewhere that we can probably find somewhere to get you in camp. Billups heeded the advice, showing up to Pro Day close to 50 pounds lighter. I was like 370, and right now I'm 324, so I lost like 50, and that was one of my main concerns. My times have improved from when I first started, and I'm just moving quicker, I'm more explosive, I got more stamina, you know, just it helps all around in every way. Should have been lost the last year. While a substantial drop in weight is noticeable, it hasn't affected his tremendous strength, which remains very much intact. Jonathan Billups' physical power is well known, but he also possesses an inner strength very few people get to see, the byproduct of a personal tragedy that turned his life upside down as a teenager in Picayune, Mississippi. Here's a young guy that lost his parents out of high school, both burnt up in a fire. It was going to my 10th grade year uh, that summer. I, had, I was with my coach, who I now call brother. So we, we get home, we get to his house, because I was just gonna stay at his house because it was real late, you know. And uh, he gets a phone call. And at first, I, I, he, was, he came in, he was like, you know, it's been a, a fight. I thought he said a fight down by your house, but really he was saying a fire. So, so we go down there, we gotta park way around the corner because there's so many cars, so many volunteer firemen, police trucks, and everything. And you know, he made me promise to stay in the car. He made me promise not to get out. Just from where I was, I can see over the tops of houses, the, the fluorescent orange glow in the night, you know, that's how I knew it was burning bad. Eventually the firemen came back and they, you know, they basically told me no one survived and they found two bodies in there. And they were basically asking me to um, identify and make sure that, you know, those are only two people in the house. I just called out to God and called on him and just had faith and I knew that he would bring me through. Right before we go out to pregame on every game, for every three years I've just been, I had to watch it to see it. He would do it right before, every time we go into prayer, he would get out to a corner, and he, and no matter where, if it was outside by the next team, or out there in the grass, in the rain, or whatever, get on his knee and talk to his mom. It was a sight to see. I have a tattoo of my um, a face of my mother and a cross, and has her name and my dad's name on it. I got it when I was 18. The reason that my mom died when I was 16, the reason I waited till I was 18, because she made me promise her I wouldn't get one until I was 18. I came up with everything. It's like I say, it's, it's a cross, praying hands with a banner going through it, my mom's name, and it got my dad's name at the bottom with some doves holding that banner. You know, anytime I, I kind of think about my mom, I get sad, I look at it. You know, before every game, I like to give it a kiss, you know, tell I love her, and you know, as long as I got this, I know she'll always be with me. And from there, I used to believe we had 12 men on the field, or 11 men and one woman. Billups hopes to reach an even higher plane with his guardian angel as he attempts to make the transition to the National Football League. A kid like Billups who's strong as an ox um, that can run, he was our top man in the line, national defensive line, that he was given an opportunity to get in camp. I think he'll show better in pads than he may show in just uh, without pads because he's a pad type guy. I'm just excited about the day, man. Grateful for this opportunity and hopefully the Lord will bless him.
At every level of football, quarterback is the most glamorous and coveted position on the team. With more offenses using wide open aerial attacks to put up eye-popping numbers, the second most coveted position has now become left tackle. The majority of quarterbacks in the NFL are right-handed. So again, you gotta protect the quarterback's backside. It's easy if you see someone coming at you where you can you know, maneuver, get out the way and do some things. That's why they're the highest paid offensive line is the uh, left tackle. For two seasons, Zion Pyatt has been the man protecting the blind side of Jackson State quarterbacks, from Casey Terrio to Clayton Moore. I fell in love with like people like Joe Thomas and Brian McKinney, like Hall of Fame and left tackles in the league. And I think the other reason I liked it because it was the money position. However, his college career actually started on the other side of the football at Tiny Lackawanna College. Zion played on the defensive side of the ball, so it was truly a different transition for Zion to come and play on the offensive side of the ball. He even moonlighted for a spell at tight end, something he never failed to remind his coaches of once he switched to offensive line at JSU. He would always come and coach, you know I can play tight end. Coach, you know I can play tight end. I say, Zion, you're all right right there where you are, son. I have seen him catch some balls, and I think that we had, we did put in a couple of plays where we could try to get a tackle algebra out to him, but we never did use it in a ball game. The Tiger coaching staff had different ideas, seeing Pyatt's size, athleticism, and massive wingspan as the perfect fit at left tackle, where he would be matched up against smaller defensive linemen. Zion possessed uh, great frames, uh, huge body, um, great athleticism, 6'5", 6'6", 300 uh, plus pounds. You know, defensive ends are running 4'4", four, 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 you know, 4'5", and they're, you know, not only that, they're stronger, so they're getting stronger and they're getting faster. So you need a more athletic guy that can handle the guy coming off the edge. Their intuition paid off, as Zion would go on to be selected first team all swag in both years as a starter. I started at left tackle, became second team All-American. Then next season, I got first team All-American. Okay, give him 6050. Although his size is imposing, his game at the college level was more about intelligence and finesse. His upper body strength is one area of concern for the scouts. That was a major concern for the, um, the scouts. But it's basically up to Zion to get in and, and put in the work in order to get the game to strength. That he needs. I always struggled that bench, and so I knew it wasn't gonna be good. My main concern I had was that when he got here, and we talked about it a lot, was his strength. He wasn't as strong as most of our linemen, and we wanted to get his strength up. Good work, Ryan. 13, Pyatt, 13. When I got here, I think I wasn't even hitting 225. I kind of just recently got better at it because I kept working at it. Despite his disappointing showing in the bench press, Pyatt shines during the offensive line drills showcasing the quick feet and athletic ability many evaluators believe will give him a legitimate shot at making an NFL roster. We knew that he, he never was a strong guy in strength, strength-wise, but he was smart enough to understand how to position his body to make plays for us. I have no doubt in my mind that Zion Pot will be playing on slammings. You don't have many athletes his size and his height that can move like he can. So I can see Zion playing on the next level. He may not look as big as some of the other guys, but he's put on some weight, he's looking strong, and I think Zion's got an excellent opportunity. I feel like I could bring a lot to the NFL because I feel like I'm just as good as any other athlete out there that works hard. In the long and storied history of Jackson State University athletics, 86 former Tigers had the distinguished honor of being selected in the National Football League draft. Four young men with four different paths to pro day. All hoping they will end up at the same destination. Hi, uh, this is Coach Buck. My conscience. I don't believe in all that voodoo and all that, you know, I don't believe in all that, you know what I'm saying? I'm saved by grace, you know what I'm saying? I just believe in Jesus. Martin Luther King said a quote. He said a quote. He said that challenge uh, adversity. Give me one second. I had a moment. <laughs> Cut. I had a moment. Hey, tell Coach. Open that door right there. Coach Yo. Use your inside voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> Police in this area. Right. Right. Nah.
Well, he was like, hey, Coach Scott, Coach Scott, look here, man. I, I ain't interfering you at the time. Let me go ahead and get this so I get out of here, man. How did you? Can you just pretend to do something? I don't know. Can you give him some weight? I'm going to bring the bench over here so I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Uh, you was like this. All right, all right. I'm you can't sorry. stale face me because I'm going to definitely start laughing if you stale face me. All right, cool. See, I'm fine now. I'm chilling. He had to put me on play like the L drill. <laughs> <laughs> Why you had to ask about the L drill though? <laughs> the L drill. <laughs>